when okay so i was watching this show and marie claire was like so did you look up baron's past yet and i'm like what do you mean <laughs> no, i just really wasn't interested in the trope they do it so well they're connecting their souls are connecting so sexy trust is so sexy <laughs> everyone, welcome back to Fall For It, an Asian drama pod. This week we have back Marie Claire. Hi! <laughs> and we're going to be talking about bromance. Um, and again, we're changing the schedule up a little bit, just like I did last time, uh, just because of the holidays and whatnot, and just trying to get on like a basic schedule. We're talking about bromance, and we're going to be talking about kind of the genre. So it's kind of going off of what we did last month and talking about coffee prints, but instead of focusing on, you know, the generic stuff that I did with Corey about the genre of Asian dramas in general, we're going to dive more into the genre of women disguised as men and talk about that a little bit. And then we'll obviously talk about bromance quite a lot because we both really enjoyed this drama, just like we did a lot of Taiwanese dramas, I think. Yeah, so, and we'll get into other locations too eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah. And for weird... some reason, Taiwanese ones are really easy to talk about because I think they they hit prime skinship. I feel like maybe mm-hmm. even C dramas and K dramas sometimes are a little bit sometimes they hold back on it early on in the show, whereas uh T dramas tend to hit the skinship right out of the gate. I don't know what it is about them, but they Yeah. They play it really high. So did you want me to say the quote? Yeah, give us the quote that kind of makes up the... Okay, there's some context. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> so this, this quote is used in relation to this hidden romance that has happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, um, the character, one character pretending she's a guy and the other character kind of wrestling with these feelings that he's not sure he should have but they kind of start to confess to each other, but they need a way because everything is taboo to Mm -hmm. say that they love each other. And so instead of saying that they love each other publicly or out there, they say, I need you. Ah, yeah. And they say it like it's about midway through the show. They start saying it and it's, it's just glorious every time they say it. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> Did I choose the right one? Yeah, you chose the right one. I always do. <laughs> I, I think that that's, that's a good, that is such a good quote because honestly, too, I remember watching it for the first time and thinking like, wow, I kind of did a similar thing with my now husband. But when we were seeing each other in college, uh, hanging out with a bunch of other single people, mm-hmm. we had words that we would use that would yeah other things it's it's quite common when you're building a relationship you Mm -hmm. build your own like subtextual language um about what things mean my my husband and I when we were first dating actually had a word for like when we were both turned on (laughs) like I (laughs) yeah I don't need to go into that but like everything there's language there's hand gestures like as you're getting to know somebody you build a common language with them just as much as skin shipping is a thing also a common hidden language in the world of their own very much and we'll get into this the secret garden Mm -hmm. that zafong introduces pian noir to yeah definitely oh my god there's so many good things with this drama i'm so glad we're talking about this one especially kind of going off of i know you haven't seen coffee prints but to kind of develop off of the I last read the summary because I needed to. yeah and i listened to your whole episode too yeah um so you heard the spoilers and whatnot it, it's mm-hmm. it's one of those shows that it came before bromance bromance did coffee prints a lot better as far as concept goes but coffee prints just has some like really classic things that if people like that trope they're gonna like coffee prints um and it's on my list <laughs> it, oh it's yeah well and that and, and again like I won't say you're gonna like it because I'm realizing that a lot of people don't like it oh <laughs> but it's uh but it, it is and it's one of those that it's a it's very heavy it's it's very heavy on the angst so it's very different from bromance and I think that bromance handles the bromance handles the am i gay am i bi what am i um who am i a lot better than coffee prince does and there's a plot detail 
that is different from coffee prints that makes it a lot easier uh, to consume. It makes it a lot more palatable, I think, uh, by the end of the show. But without and I actually that, I actually don't know that it's more palatable. I don't I, know that it is either. I would argue that I I it makes me actually kind of mad. <laughs> and we'll we'll get into that in the spoiler territory. <laughs> so, um, because yeah. I'm kind of on the same page as you, but it it it's my, handled oddly i would say and that maybe is the only thing i don't love about this show is like Mm. how that was handled but we'll get into that in spoiler territory as as you said to to talk about kind of like the trope like what they're doing with this we've seen it many 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 times in western storytelling we see it a lot in eastern storytelling we see it all over the place right yeah it is Um, a it is a common narrative conversation i would say that happens because of power inequality mm-hmm. and even social inequality between between men and women culturally yeah and playing into gender identity gender roles what is acceptable in culture and i would say given that we're in the 21st century that we are now in a place where maybe women have the most gender equality that we've ever had i don't know in some locations we have less like mm-hmm. it's 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 always going to be a question on people's minds. And I think that as we struggle through it in our own selves, our narratives and our fiction struggle with it too and try to tell us what culturally we are experiencing. And stories like these, they do tend to, like you're saying, like they kind of evolve over time depending on like what these gender norms are. And it does require like, it requires so much uh, suspension of disbelief. I I found a term for it. Yeah, what is it? It's called weirdness sensor. Ah. <laughs> no, I it, it's, it's, so a, it's an better. actual term for it because in universe the characters believe the weird rules and this happens in farce and this happens in comic books with like Clark Kent Superman the uni- in universe characters believe the weird uh censorship that is happening where they ignore the things that don't align with the persona that the hiding character is is doing uh-huh okay that makes yeah. sense i love that um so this trope in the western sense uh, we would call this the Sweet Polly Oliver, which comes from an English folk song. Um, and I found about uh, I found out about this like very recently. So this is how the English folk song goes. It says, as Sweet Polly Oliver lay musing in bed, a sudden strange fancy came into her head. Nor father nor mother shall make me false prove. I'll list as a soldier and follow my love, which that was pronounced, I guess, Louvre in certain old English. Uh, So early next morning, she softly arose and dressed herself up in her dead brother's old clothes. She cut her hair close and she stained her face brown and went for a soldier to fair London town. And basically this is like, that's a, like Mulan. It's it's Mulan. It's it's uh, it's Mulan. Mulan. Um, there's also uh, there's a ton a of few, literature stories that well, are, there's actual historical people like yes, um, real people that people. would dress up uh, women that would dress up as men mm-hmm. to become soldiers because they had no other choice, or yeah. they would, um, you know, like Anne Bonny and Mary Reed would dress yep. up like men, yeah, you know, to be pirates. And there's women who fought in the Civil War in America to. They disguise themselves as men. Like, yeah, there's women all over the world who did this. I think there was a famous scientist actually that they found out after her death that that she was a man or she was a woman. She oh had wow! Been like dressed up like that. Like it. It was a common, not common, common, but and in some ways, authors even longer mm-hmm. women who wrote sometimes would be attributed to being a man. Yeah you know, or they were anonymous. And so it is not uncommon that women were more heavily involved. They're just not written about as much as we would like. I just remembered another example from a movie that I absolutely adore. So it's all over literature. It's all over our history. It's in, in real life. It happens a lot. But I think a place that it takes place in 
quite a lot, obviously, Shakespeare, correct? So yeah. what's funny about Shakespeare is that, you know, Shakespeare performed as it was in the Elizabethan era was always done by men. There were no women on the stage. So when they wore trousers, they were men. When they wore skirts, they were women. That was the easy way to, to decipher what was a man and what was a woman. So the the woman disguised as a man trope in Shakespeare was particularly funny because they were men disguised as women disguised as men. So that just was a total farcical, um, total ridiculous farcical. Like in Twelfth Night as an example. Yeah. Uh, tw- the yeah, Viola Night. was dressed up as a woman. Yeah. Or the, the male actor was dressed up as a woman who's dressed yeah. up as a man. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and often... I, and that continued on like in pantomime mm-hmm. as a um, pantomime is a uh, British play uh, that does like fairy tales or other, uh, you know, kind of uh, fantasy type storytelling where there's a lot of singing and a lot of dancing. And there's always a dame character, which is a man dressed up as a woman and a best boy which is a woman dressed up as a man right. playing kind of the romantic lead. Right. Those are those are kind of two of the things. And it's it's played with in theater so much right. from the time, like probably even before Shakespearean time too. Mm-hmm. But, but it was quite common in, in uh, Elizabethan time because of the restrictions of women being actresses. Yeah, and, and and it was it was funny because Shakespeare loved playing with gender roles and he loved playing with word he did a lot of word play. So there was a lot of funny instances where the man and the woman would meet in their disguises or whatever. Um and there and there's a lot of word play that happened in those moments. There was a lot of words that were created into the English language in those moments. So so yeah, that's just it it was a my my favorite Shakespeare play was As You Like It. It's always been my favorite mm-hmm. Shakespeare play. I love it so much, um, and I think it kind of set it set a lot of things in motion for me. I read it when I was pretty young because I was in a Shakespeare company when I was uh, very young. Uh, <laughs> I think I was uh, ten or eleven. So a lot of the media that I I watched and consumed later on was very affected by my love for Shakespeare specifically as you like it. And a lot of the stuff, a lot of the examples that I'm going to list are like some of my favorite films or my favorite media of all time. And I was, I didn't realize this until I was going through where the trope was in media. I I didn't realize that I was such a fan of this trope because I know a lot of people are not a fan of this trope. So I just find that really interesting to go through the examples. She's the man. With yeah. Amanda Bynes. Which is based, it's based on Twelfth Night. Based on Twelfth Night. Uh, I love that movie so much. It's hysterical. It's like one of my favorites. Yes. Um, the Parsons. tampon scene particularly yes. is oh hilarious. <laughs> Channing Tatum is so good in that movie. He's it's so ridiculous. good in that movie. <laughs> and it's about like soccer, which is just like this like... <laughs> Like, like she really wants to play soccer. <laughs> yeah, she really wants to play mm-hmm. soccer, so she has to disguise herself as a man because they don't let no guys, other choice they let women. Yeah, they don't let women on that particular team, so she has to be a man. Um, so she pretends to be her brother, which is the exact same. Well, most it's it's very close to what happens in Twelfth Night with the sister pretend, pretending to be her twin brother. So yeah, um, it's very much a modernized version of Twelfth Night. Like uh, yeah. 10 things I hate about you is like taming of the shrew. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, they were really on a kick on that in Hollywood for a while. They were like, in Emma, like the 90s. Yeah. Emma I know. Being modernized to be clueless. Like yep. there's a lot of that. I think we need more of that. I really enjoyed. <laughs> I know me too. I love all that. I, I loved all of that. Um, Pirates of the Caribbean, Keira Knightley, I think dresses yeah. up as a man a few times. Uh, Shakespeare in love, uh, which Kyle, your husband, is in a play version of yes, right now. Yes, he's in the play version of it uh, right now. Uh, it'll probably be done by the time this comes out. But um, so yeah, cool. he, he's playing Burbage, so he gets to boom and make um, inspiring speeches <laughs> and stuff like that. So that's funny. I love it. I love that movie so much. It's another one, again, like people don't like 
this as much as I as I loved it. Um, and I mean, it won an Oscar. It did win uh, an Oscar. So a lot of people don't like it, though. I just I they don't I like Shakespeare in Love. It. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that it's a trope that people recognize as they've seen it a lot because it it is used a lot. Yeah, like it's used a lot. But it's not used as much as it's not it's not used, it's not as, used much as, as much as, as the tropes. bridal carry. Yeah, yeah. Like it's <laughs> not that it's not that prevalent. Like it's it's pro it's, it's used it's, a lot in anime. Yeah, it's used a lot in anime, but it's not used as like a continuous thing. Only in like Oran High School Host Club, like that's the con- the continuous one. I know there's some others. There's a few. There's a few but, others where either the guy a guy is dressing up as a as a woman, yeah. uh, long term, or you know, yeah. There's a I'm few. I I would say Sword Art Online. Oh, where there's yeah. The gets- second season where he's in Gungale, Gungale, mm-hmm. he's mistaken for a woman. Because he accidentally chooses the female avatar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then everyone's like, I, uh, they treat him differently, <laughs> of course, right? They do. But, yeah. but there is a difference because um, Sweet Polly Oliver uh-huh. trope uh-huh. is different from the Bifo Nun yeah. uh, trope. Mm-hmm. Bifonon is um, you're an androgynous person or you just happen to dress that way and you're mistaken for the other gender. Yes. Whereas the sweet Polly Oliver trope is you're purposefully doing it to and and in many ways trying to escape or protect yourself. Yeah. And like that's what happens in Twelfth Night. That's what happens in bromance. Right. For reasons. Right. Um, well, in she's coffee- trying to protect herself. Well, she, her parents, and her are trying to protect her. Right in Coffee Prince, um, it is. It starts as the bifo nun. Uh, yeah, and then she ends then up she choosing ends up- to continue. Yeah, so yeah. It, it it the Coffee Prince gets particularly complicated, and some people would say unnecessarily so. But I I got it. But I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Motocross is another like Twelfth Night one where I grew up with that one because that was on that was a Disney Channel original movie when I was a kid and I loved it it was so good um she I've never seen it what is it it's it's not your generation it's like this girl who wants to be she wants to do um yeah she wants to do motocross she wants to do motocross yeah but it's called motocross like 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 starcross or what okay cute Um, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, she so she pretends to be her brother gets get has like an injury so he can't get on the bike and so she decides to go in his place to be in this competition and then falls in love. Robin Hood, Robin Hood had a has a ton of adaptations where this happens with Maid Marian um and the and the um merry men dress up as women. Oh, yeah, occasionally. That's right, that's right, yeah, yeah, like that that happens they too. They do that a lot. Yeah. The, uh and you mentioned just... uh in our outline here Tamora Pierce in the Lioness Quartet which right. if you have not read was actually meant to be an adult fiction novel, like fantasy novel, um but she made it like a little bit more palatable to teenage girls and mm-hmm. kids. It is still exceptional. Read the yeah. Lioness Quartet, read all of Tamora Pierce's stuff. She's amazing. She's amazing. She's one of the first that did what she did, and she's ex- she yeah. still is exceptional. Um, and and what I love about that series particularly is uh, Alana, Elena, Elena, Alana, mm-hmm. however you pronounce it, uh, who goes by Alan, um, struggles with her own femininity for so long, and then ends up embracing it. It's yeah. it's glorious, <laughs> it's glorious, and she ends up being this like strong, amazing knight woman. Yeah. Lady yeah. night, as it were. Um, amazing. And then you also brought up uh, some fantasy references. Like, yeah. it's quite common in Lord of the Rings with Eowyn and her dressing up as a man. And that's in, in the book itself. Yeah. As well as Arya Stark in Game of Thrones dressing up as a man to avoid, or a boy, to avoid uh, capture. And um, it just ends up being easier for her to yeah. wear pants. <laughs> yeah. And Brienne, who gets by Brian, a lot Brian, better yeah. as a man than a woman, like or as as people to believe her to be a man rather than a woman. I mean, she she's so tall, Gwendolyn so Christie. Tall. Yeah, she, she would rather <laughs> and in the book, she's super tall too. She's yeah, quite intimidating. Yeah, so like that's kind of the 
a good summation of the Western examples. I think when you go into the East, it becomes just as prevalent, but we don't, we don't have like you and I didn't, we weren't raised on these stories as, as much. Right. Yeah. So just generally what we've been exposed to is like Mulan. Mulan is, you know, a well, I would say that that's like the main story, the main story. Yeah. Um, of that happening. Yeah. And it did happen a lot more. I know a lot of, if you watch a lot of like historical Asian dramas, they're based in a lot of tropes that have been around because of the myths and legends uh, that that have been passed down. So a couple other K dramas I, I didn't, I mean, honestly, Coffee Prince, right? Coffee Prince has this trope, but so does this other one called You Are Beautiful, which I haven't watched yet but i'm going to watch because it looks so good and it's from like 2009 um but it is another k drama that has this trope so uh and and it happens to have like a little bit more of a it's like a music thing where she joins a band pretending to be a guy so uh and i and i wonder ty if um these narratives have existed as long as they have existed because Oh boy. Okay. Mm-hmm. This is a conversation. Uh, because <laughs> gender norms, gender relations, and queer narratives couldn't exist. Yeah. You know, like conversations about those things couldn't exist in, um, you know, like, let's talk about women's rights. Let's talk about uh, the fact that I'm actually attracted to men. Yeah. Or if I'm a man, you know, or I'm attracted to women, if I'm a woman, you know, yeah. um, like there's some questions about whether Shakespeare was actually at least bisexual yeah, um, because of how he wrote sonnets for men. Yeah. You know, with yeah. men as the object and not being able to have a conversation publicly, even though we know at least, at least 10% of the population is queer. Yeah. At least. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's always existed. It, it we know this historically. Mm-hmm. This is not. It's not a modern phenomenon. Or it is not. So, how do you culturally have a conversation about something that is considered to be not culturally acceptable, especially in the Middle Ages, or especially in the Elizabethan times, or anywhere along human history, when you want to have these conversations, but they're almost like hush hush. You have to do them in these ways that. Um, play with the ideas without it actually being inappropriate culturally. And what's so interesting about this is not that I'm saying it's inappropriate. It is not. No. That's the point is that we've gotten to this point where we've had these conversations enough that it's now we're, you know, legalized same sex marriage, you know, that, right. that is important. So we know that like, Korean dramas and Taiwanese dramas like kind of talk about this stuff a lot. Uh, modern day, they've done it in the past or whatever. They play around with these like gender norms. There's a but the, but there's in China there's like Chinese censor- censorship uh, that they don't let you they don't let you do as much. But there's this one show called Go Princess Go that came out in 2015 and was banned. <laughs> because of the subject matter and it was about a man who basically he's a playboy in the modern day and he is very disrespectful towards women and he gets thrown back in time into like you know it's basically what becomes a a historical drama but he becomes he's in a woman's body (sighs) he falls in love with a man and it's was this a sea drama this is a sea drama. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's called Go, Princess, Go. And the guy that is in Accidentally in Love, he's a secondary character. The male lead in Accidentally in Love is a secondary character in this one. This is the only reason I know huh. about it. He has big ears and is super cute with his big ears. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> so he falls in love with a man instead. So he learns how to be a woman. And it's a totally different twist on this trope and it happened to be one that was done in china of all places so going off of that what and now it's banned and now it's banned but what, what i was saying about all of this is just to say that um yeah that's that's the point the point of all of these stories is to have the conversation and to push that envelope 
pretty far, you know, like to push it as far as we can so that we can talk about it. And even though a lot of the K dramas and a lot of the T dramas might end the trope and say, or not just that, but like the trope in general, they might end in saying like, yeah, oh, she was a girl all along. You're not gay. Like, congratulations. Mm. That's not what it's about. It's about uh, falling in love with your soulmate. Yeah. Regardless of gender. No, and I agree. It is about uh, the person to person uh, love. Um, yeah. Very much in like, a, it doesn't matter that you're a man or a woman. It's not even a bisexual thing. It's actually more of like a pansexual thing where it, yeah. it doesn't matter who the person is, they love the person. Yeah. They connect with like the soul. Like that's something I kept saying. I, I literally, I, I was watching bromance and I'd run around the house and I'd be like, they're connecting. Their souls are connecting. This is amazing. And I just like, <laughs> oh my God. I did the same thing when I watched Coffee and Friends. I ran around the house and told Corey, they're connecting. The souls, they're connecting. And I'm, I, I just love it. Like I, and that's any drama that I watch. I, I see <laughs> that, right? And it's so exciting yeah. when it starts to happen. Yeah. But it's, I don't know. There's something, there's something so universal about that connection and, and them falling in love with each other. Despite you know, those odds, like despite, despite the odds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because yeah, and like all of the things in the way and they get over them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a, um, there's a quote that I think we brought up in the, the one of the Star Wars podcasts, actually, where uh, uh, Patrick Ruffus, who wrote the story, The Name of the Wind, mm-hmm. has this really great quote about love. And he says, uh, anyone can love a thing because... That's as easy as putting a penny in your pocket. But to love something despite, to know the flaws and love them too, that is rare and pure and perfect. Mm -hmm. You remember that one? So that's, to me, every time I like watch these Asian dramas, like there's this moment where that starts to happen. Like they start to love them because of something. But mm-hmm. then they start to love them despite of all of the flaws and all of the things that they see that they would normally run away from. That's yeah. the cool factor. That's the part that I'm like. <gasps> and it can happen at different times. And that's where like the dramatic tension yeah. comes in, especially in in like other dramas where it's, you know, a male and a female or there's like class differences or one mm-hmm. person has to get over their prejudice and their pride. And, you know, like it can yeah. happen at different times in different places for some. But what's fascinating about bromance is that they almost love each other from the beginning. Yeah, they do. <laughs> like from the beginning. And the things that are obstacles in the way is like, is these artifices that they've put in their own minds. Yeah. Like the need for her to pretend to be a a man and Mm -hmm. the need for him to only love women. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's good. It's so good. Like it's so good. Ah. They do it. They do. They, it's so cheesy in some moments, but it's so good. <laughs> like the good cheesy. Yeah. You know? It's You're a good like, cheesy. I'm sold even though this is so ridiculous. Yeah. I and like it, cheesy. It's cute. It's yeah. so cute. It is really cute. Um, it's very well done. It, it kind of breaks to me. It breaks a lot of, uh, Let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah, let's go into it. <laughs> so now we're going to head into the main part. Let's talk about romance in general. Because yeah, we we talked about the trope. We talked about the examples of the trope. Talked about where this comes from, why it's so endearing, um, and let's talk about the show bromance. So for those who haven't seen it, we are going to do a non-spoiler territory discussion and we will announce when we get into spoilers um so and if you're cool with spoilers then feel free to listen to the rest of the episode but we will let you know when we start getting there so just yeah generic uh what the show is it's a 2015 taiwanese drama that means that it's got the same production value as like a 2009 uh, k drama Um, yeah (laughs) it has some audio issues it does. A lot uh, of tea dramas I'm, do. It, all tea dramas kind of have audio issues, but they're not dubbed. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Eh. Yeah. No, it they is. They kind of have. Tea dramas also ha- follow the the 
typical OST situation where they have pop groups, usually somebody who's in the show yep. doing some of the songs, uh, and that follows that as well. Um, yep. It has the amazing, uh, like, amusement park that is featured uh for a bit in refresh man yeah so it's like coming back home a little bit you get a glimpse of um of the the carousel carousel yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you get a glimpse of the carousel and you're like oh that's what was behind it yeah like, you're like yep. what yeah, yeah I, I i think that the i think the amusement park comes up at, in a uh, fall in love with me as well i think that the amusement park comes up in like every major i, I mean drama. it's that and the swing set yeah the swing set the swing yeah. set is there and then there's also like this one oh, road that everyone's the calls. road yeah the road the, with the wall yeah the, the road <laughs> with the wall there's there's like the swing set that is also used in i think almost every single one of them yeah. they end up on the swing set i don't know where the swing set is but if we ever go to taiwan thai <laughs> we are gonna go to uh taipei uh like the main taipei tower because that's yeah. also in a ton of them as yeah. you either see it or whatever and then the swing set the amusement park and that <laughs> one wall that's it <laughs> one run, run we'll be like we've literally seen every tea drama <laughs> it's like how you can go into go to new york and go on the tour of uh you've got mail yeah, like you can go to that re- that cafe that they meet up in, and he's like, "You're just in love with this idea of this guy." Yeah, he, she's cr- all crushed. There you go. Like you see it all of New York. Yeah, totally. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Um, yeah. So, okay, it's high level. Yeah. Why or what happens before we're going to spoilers? Uh huh. Is that uh, the main character, Yan Noa? is born accidentally as a woman (laughs) according to according to the fortune teller who was consulted when her parents were pregnant with her Uh and they were sure they were having a boy which is a quite it's actually quite a common thing i have a good friend who um who is actually chinese and like there's this whole thing about you know, date of getting married, uh, yeah. when people uh, auspicious dates, right? Auspicious things, and um, whether they think they're having a boy or a girl, and if they're mm-hmm. having a boy, it means one thing, depending on the auspicious date. So it's quite a common thing. And so the fortune teller was just doing his job, and he was like, "You're having a boy or a girl?" And they're like, "We're having a boy. Of course, we're having a boy." <laughs> and and no, no, it they wasn't. did not have a boy. Yeah, they had a girl. Yeah. And that meant the fortune teller was like, oh, no, <laughs> that means she's going to die. Yeah, because he said, like, when it was a boy, he said, "You're, it, she's going to be or he's going to be very successful and he's going to have all this really good fortune. And then when it was a girl, he said, OK, well, that can't come true now because it's the opposite. Yeah. But exactly. he was just doing it to like he was doing it to save his reputation as a fortune teller. Yeah, exactly. And the only way that she can be successful is if she pretends to be a guy. She lives as it's a It's like guy. tricking fate, right? Like yeah. hiding. Yep, tricking. But he fate. specifically told them that she would die. Yeah. If, if uh she didn't pretend to be a man until she was 28, 26. 26. 26. Yeah, yeah, 26 years old. Yeah. And, but, and, but it's funny because her cousin knew. <laughs> yeah, her cousin. Well, I think family knew because, like, you can only hide so many things like yeah. from people who literally live with you. Um, yeah. And her cousin, like, lives down the street or whatever. And, the, like, mm-hmm. her cousin is her best, her closest and best friend, I would say. Yeah, her cousin knew she was a girl when they were kids. So. Yeah. Yeah. And probably, like you know, family was told she was born a girl and then they were like, no, 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 we can't tell anyone. We can't tell anybody else. Um, yeah. And so uh, Yenua grows up um, doing boyish things and mm-hmm. staying away from friends, especially because anyone who got close to her w- might have find out her secret and yeah. she'd always dress as a boy and keep her hair as a boy and like do things as a boy and walk like a boy. And, she, and Megan Lee, who plays the, the lead, very much is so good at acting. She is so she's really good. good. Yeah. She's so good at playing up, especially in the beginning before she starts to realize her femininity. Yeah. 
so good. Yeah, she's so good. She fooled me many times. Like, I, I literally, I was like, well, and like, there's fair, moments when, like, she's far enough away and you're like, you squint, you like, <laughs> where you she squint, does, she like, squint. Well, no, no. If you squint, like, you can't tell. Like, she talks, yeah. like, oh, and she does these things until she has these, like, little cute moments when she, like, breaks, right? Because yeah. she's so close to um, the main romantic lead. Yeah. But um, everything ends up okay for mm-hmm. the two of them. And the m- romantic lead has his own kind of unique situations going on. And did we want to talk about the real life situation of Baron Yan? I did. Yeah. So while we're in this non-spoiler area. So Baron Yan's yeah. character is actually a uh his father, who's only his adopted father in yeah. it, is a mafia boss who has basically retired to own an amusement park. But they yeah. still kind of keep the clan alive and like the f- brothership brother brotherhood and the fellowship the of tri- this clan. What's of the called? tribe. The yeah, the triad? The triad, yeah. 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 So, so they still they still keep it alive. But Baron Yan is actually the son of a gangster. Baron Chen. Baron Chen. Sorry, Baron Chen. I apologize. <laughs> You're gonna have to cut that earlier. Ben no, Baron sorry. Chen. Baron Chen is yeah, Baron Chen is legit the son of a gangster. Yeah. Of a like a mafia guy. Like his yeah. dad is mafia. Like when okay, so I was watching this show and Marie Claire was like so did you look up Baron's past yet? And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> well, and I had, I think I had watched this like a couple of months before you and you were yeah. just getting into Asian dramas. Yeah, I, and, yeah, I was. And, and I was, I did, yeah, I didn't really know. I didn't look up a lot. I didn't look up things when I started watching them. I just watched them. I binged them like mm-hmm. very quickly, but, um, cause I was watching them. Like, Baron. Movie. Yeah, she's like, and she's just like, look him up, just look him up. And I looked at, I was in, I remember I was in the car, uh, in the passenger seat on the way to work, and I was like, no, 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 it's all over his wiki page. Like that's his wiki page. Yeah, and it's I, like, like, like actually a, the son of a gangster. He's got like a, a brother. Boss. His brother was like arrested for yeah. like mafia activity and like yeah. murdering people, and I'm like, holy crap! But but yeah, he's he is. Baron Chen is a successful actor. He's walked away from his family. You yeah. know, he's he's left all that behind. Um, I think he lived with a grandmother, or he he lived with a different relative, so that yeah, he wasn't exposed up. to it. Yeah, yeah. But that's his past. And what's so funny is that they address it in a very meta way through his character in like the second episode or so. Yeah, with all the reporters that come up to him, they're like, after. "Aren't you? Aren't you still like?" the mob yeah <laughs> are you yeah. still are you still these mob like the this mafia like aren't you yeah. aren't you still these criminals and, and he's like no and he says no he said yeah he says no and what's really funny about that too another really weird meta thing about it is that his character is not actually uh his character was adopted into that family so i feel like you know baron chen you know as there was a, a lot of it could have been real inspiration or something yeah. like it feels like that i don't know yeah. um but i found it super fascinating when i was watching it and i looked up this actor and i'm like what is going on with this actor <laughs> um he was awesome he was this, awesome in this show too he he yeah. sells so much of the uh believability of the weirdness sensor yeah because he passes things over that are more obvious when um Megan Lee is acting particularly feminine yeah and us as the audience is like how can he not guess this he has a reason he has a like a like it's the own in your universe logic that he sells I think he does this thing that and this is I was watching it today and I was like ah that's what it is I, I finally put my finger on it he has this look on his face that's like, I'm suspicious of you. I'm suspicious of you. And then she explains it away and he goes, okay, you have your reasons. And he lets it go. Yeah. And that's he lets it go. Yeah. so attractive. Because it's like, you know, if he was any other character, if he reacted any other way, it would kind of feel a little weird. Like the main bad guy never lets it go. No, he doesn't let it no, go. No, he he never lets it go. And yeah. that's actually kind of like one of the differences. Whereas it's just the foil. Um, yeah. 
whereas Baron's character, uh, Du Zufong, um, he yeah, Zufong, yeah, Zufong, he he very much believes Pianoa no matter what. Yeah, he trusts her. Believes he trusts whoever she is and trusts her. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's and um, so sexy. It's so sexy, and that's something I was trust say is about so se- trust. Trust is so sexy. <laughs> yes. Oh, it is. So uh, something I want to say about Megan Lay, like while we're on the subject of like who they actually are, like as as a uh, as actors as professionals, uh, Megan is very I shy. That. Megan's very shy. So I watched a lot of the behind the scenes stuff with bromance because I couldn't get enough of their chemistry after I finished it, um, and they have a lot of footage, which is really nice. They also have, they also did some kind of like tour type thing where they went around Taiwan and they did like stage performances and stage like discussions about the show and whatnot. And they did some funny things where they were like on the stage and the curtain goes up and they're actually in a bed. And then they like throw off the covers and they have to be fully clothed. So they, they did a lot of these cute things, but come to find out Megan's really, 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 really shy. Like she's very conservative. Um, There are certain things that she wouldn't do on the show. There's certain lines that she drew with their intimacy. But if you watch the show, you would never believe that because they are so intimate together in a way that's very, it's not sleazy. It's not, you know, slutty or anything like that. It's, it's like uh, amped up skinship. Oh, it is. They are constantly touching each other. They're constantly touching each other. There's a, there is a butt grab at one point that's done in like the heat of passion that I don't think I've ever seen in any other Asian drama ever. I've never seen that. That will stick with me forever. It was an accidental butt grab. Accidental butt grab. Uh, accident. What do you mean by accidental? Is that the one in the office? There's more than one butt grab. There has to be. I'm talking about the one where they're like horizontal on the floor <laughs> oh that's later on though when they're going at it that is right yeah no it's later on for sure yeah but, but like when he grabs her butt in the office mm-hmm. yeah that's that another one right because that was a yeah it was like a funny yeah. thing there was like they are on e- like arms around each other and the whole is all built on the fact that they pian noir yeah. Saves Du Zifong's life by fighting with him against these like uh bad guys. Another and mafia group. They become yeah. sworn brothers. Brothers. And that's another brothers. reason. This is another reason why she won't tell him, right? It's like they're sworn. This is all in the brothers. first episode. So, yeah. yeah. It's sworn it's, brothers. And she doesn't want yeah. to betray the trust that was put into her um yeah. with that with that you know promise and that yeah. and and what she swore to which is to protect him yeah um but that, and with that we should probably get into the spoiler territory because we're gonna get deep into spoilers well, pretty soon let's talk let's talk a little bit more about the other characters and then we can like oh know, sure yeah we can totally talk about characters without getting into spoilers i did want to say something else about like the moment that that uh uh, uh, Pino, 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 yeah, Pino, I don't know. It's like they so sometimes they say it as like Pino, Pino, Pino. Pino. sometimes they say like yeah, no, um, yeah, no, sounds funny, yeah, Pino. So, her and him, let's just call him our hero and our heroine because that's what I like to say. Uh, when as soon as they meet, they have like this instant, like hot chemistry, and it's not. It's not like other shows, you know, I watch where it's like, oh, they're so cute. Oh, I want them together. Da, 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 da. No. I watch these two and I'm like, they need to do it now. Like, <laughs> well, and it's because they're like about to fight. They're like, oh, we're going <laughs> to fight and we're going to we're going to fight. And they there's uh, not all of them are done really well from a fight choreography perspective. No. But some of them are actually OK. Yeah. And they're actually quite entertaining. I'm like, this is like the most like martial arts they've seen in a animation drama ever yeah and actually it's funny so you can tell like whenever her body double steps in but he, this is actually something that baron chin baron chin is like 
he doesn't do Asian dramas normally. This is like one of the only Asian dramas he did. Um, he needs to do more though. He's amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, he does action movies. He does yeah. martial arts movies. You know, so that that's what he does. But but their but their chemistry is just off the charts. And again, yeah. like I was saying about how the fact that she is so shy. Uh, she talks about in interviews how he always made her so comfortable because he knew her limits and he he made her comfort comfortable in like a very silly way mm-hmm. like it was like he, there's like I, I saved a gif about I saved a bunch of gifs of them interacting together behind the scenes like he bites her hand or he bites her ear he whispers in her ear something we don't know what it is you know he gets close to her and then they laugh and they play and they you know yeah. they, they bicker and they fight and they do silly things together and that helped her be more intimate in the times that were a little bit more awkward for her. Yeah. So I just think that that's very, you know, not everyone, not everyone has that way to open up and like there's different actors and different actresses that need different ways to open up, but they were able to figure it out. And that's really special to me. So, um, but yeah, it was a, it was a partnership um, back to yeah. the, the consent stuff, right? Like they became very comfortable in each other's bubble and that's really exactly. key for building um, intimacy as well as uh, building um, chemistry. Yeah. And cause you can tell when it doesn't, it's not working. Like you can tell when it's not working. I've watched a couple of dramas where I'm like, okay, it's not, it's not really working. Uh, <gasps> Boys over but... flowers, the Korean version. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's one I still have to watch that. Yeah, no, that does not. That, I, what I've seen of <laughs> what I've seen of it so far, I can see that. But yeah, uh, one I watched recently, Shopping King Louis. I absolutely adore it. But that show was not about the main couple because they just didn't have the chemistry to carry the show. That show was about mm. all the other characters. Um, but you know, like that's okay. They did they did what they they did what they did with what they had. But um, but yeah, the chemistry in this particular drama, uh, it doesn't it doesn't just carry the show like in Refresh Man. The chemistry really carried the show through. And this show, it's yeah, there was more, a plot though with Refresh plot. Man. Uh, the 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 plot. Hmm, I like the plot in Romance better. Uh, I think that they both do the same good thing of laying the groundwork at the beginning that pays off really well at the end when you kind of find out. Oh, the mystery yeah. of what was happening yeah. and that that very much pays off in bromance so well yeah um i agree with that yeah yeah i think that i, I actually saw that today when i was watching it for the second time i was like wow they they do very similar things as far as laying groundwork that comes up later so i, I like really appreciate groundwork that. and foreshadowing and a few other pieces that mm-hmm. really do tie into the success of the of the drama. Um, mm-hmm. I would say some dramas because maybe they're not as planned out and they start to, they, they're still writing or filming as it's being put on. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it, they can't do that as much. Whereas if they kind of film it all at once, which a lot of tea dramas are filmed all at once mm-hmm. and then put on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I'm, I'm figuring out a lot of that out a little bit more as I start to see look into more of like production schedules and whatnot. But uh, yeah. So the other characters, I think we want to talk about too. Uh, I, I, I I listed the second as like the mother and daughter duo. (laughs) Yeah. Cause you brought up something funny. I was watching them today and I was like, wow, they're so overly comical. And I think you you wanted to talk about how they're very anti-trope. Yeah, like uh, typically when you have women that are involved in the main's main men main hero's life, they are anti uh, girlfriend. Yes, right. Or they're they're evil in some way, or they're a dragon mom, which is a very like uh, Asian trope slash real thing that yeah. exists where um, mothers like basically control their children's lives and yeah. I'm not saying that happens in all situations but in this situation and I don't know if it's because like the character is adopted or that just happens to be the relationship that this family has built mm-hmm. um, neither the mom nor the sister um, who is the biological child of the mom um and it's funny because the mom refers to herself as uh, like sister 
uh, Fang, <laughs> which um, is um, is like a way of saying like, please don't call me like uh, auntie or whatever because I'm not that old. Yeah, <laughs> she yeah. just wants to be young and hip and cool still, you know. Yeah. And uh, she is the one that pushes Zifong out to piano. Like mm-hmm. she's the one who's like, you know, build this friendship, mm-hmm. be less weird, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and even when it kind of comes out that maybe this is a, a homosexual relationship question mark. Yeah. She's like, she struggles with it like for a hot minute. And then yeah. she's like, eh, he's happy. Yeah. <laughs> he's, happy, he's healthy, whatever, you know, like, and, and I loved it was, it was very refreshing to see a mom relationship um i would say that pian noir's mother is less like that because of the cons- constant worry about her daughter dying and that they're very yeah. superstitious and things like that but even with that she knows she can't stand in the way of what you know you know, is, is gonna do yeah because in a lot it's of refreshing it is very refreshing because in a lot of dramas uh the male lead specifically the male lead's parents will be either one will be dead or both will be dead and that like will like that will that will be something that kind of pushes him to do something in the plot in this particular one they they mess around with with they mess around that idea a little bit yeah yeah um but with as far as with the mother goes just the mother alone like at the beginning you would expect her because she's a single mom to be like overly critical of the yeah people in her son's life and her daughter's life and her daughter's life but she's not but she literally is trying to shove her children in any direction that yeah. they will be happy <laughs> it's so be happy. funny it's like they're so funny go and- date this person because i don't care if they have no status i don't <laughs> care i just want you to shut up and be happy like <laughs> it's just funny well, it's also great because she the mother specifically really kind of is she's a very honorable woman like she's yeah. someone who is constantly thinking about her husband um and who you know <laughs> she's thinking about her late husband constantly and she is she's wanting her daughter to find someone who's going to take care of her like not someone of yeah. status or whatever and she wants her son to be happy and she wants her son to not focus like on have a partner she wants her son to have yeah. a partner that's yeah. incredibly respectful even though sometimes uh both her and her daughter kind of go about these things in a very overly comical way that they're like practically cartoon characters yeah they're yeah, very funny. very uh uh, we covered this in uh, my only love song, the comic yeah. duo, and they are the comic duo. Which is, this. again, it's super refreshing because they're two women. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love it. And that's a, a, a one of the notes I had was that all of the women in this drama are all just funny as hell. They're all really strong characters and they're all really funny and they're, they overdo everything. And all of the men in this drama happen to be pretty soft and emotional and like they break very easily. Yeah. I find that yeah. very interesting. It was, it was very well done from a gender norms perspective and like, yeah. uh, you know, upending expectations. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I, for some reason, I, I really hesitated picking this one up because it kept on popping up on Netflix. Like you liked refresh man, you should watch this one. <laughs> and I'm like, man, it's okay. And then when I watched it, I was like, why wasn't I listening to Netflix? Like, oh, you know, as soon like as it popped up on my Netflix. I literally was like, I'm watching this one because no, I know, but like, I like, I just, I would like, I, would, I just really wasn't interested in the trope. Like I yeah. felt like I wasn't interested. And I hear this a lot from people like, ah, it's just done too much, you know, but this is done in such a unique way. Like I really, really encourage you. If you haven't checked it out, watch the first like three episodes. Yeah. They do it so well. Like yeah. it's so well done. Um, did you want to go into the rest of the kind of secondary characters quickly, and then yeah, and then making it the spoilers, yeah. So yeah. Uh, the other characters, uh, we have like the clueless. We I, I called him the clueless friend. <laughs> I didn't want to write down the names of some of these because they're hard to say. Yeah, uh, but the clueless he, friend who's in the 
he's also in Fall in Love with Me. Yeah. Yes. As Aaron Chance. Uh, and he Aaron plays, oh, okay. So he is like the exact same character. Oh, yeah. Exactly um, the same. <laughs> exact same character. And and the thing is like the, the defining feature is he's a clueless friend who is also a virgin. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it, it, it's called out in both shows. It is. So I'm wondering if he's like typecast. And I know we know the tea drama universe is very small. And so we see some of these characters like come back as, or some of these actors come back in different tea dramas. And we're like, oh, I've seen you before. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it, it's just really awkward to like see him and it's like the exact same character, like no yeah. change. Yeah, it's completely the same. Like, falls in love with the exact same kind of woman as well. Like, yeah, like the powerful, like, secondary woman character. Yeah, yeah, he's he's so good. <laughs> um, and, yeah, and he gets he gets bulldozed a lot by by powerful women. Uh, he gets bulldozed by the woman who he thinks is his male friend, which is yeah. hilarious. But uh, yeah, I, I and he's I, cl- I love pretty much woman. clueless until the end, which is yeah. also really funny. <laughs> He's, I think he does tend to stand up for himself a bit at the end with uh, yeah he he has a little bit yeah. of an arc he grows and he, does. he um he wants to win the love of the person that he's invested in and yeah uh, yeah which is kind of nice um yeah and then we have uh B who is uh I I I'm gonna call him B because that's his real name like in real life he's an idol he is a Taiwanese idol and and he's actually really a lot bigger than I thought he was but he's a solo singer and he he actually has songs on uh the original soundtrack as well Mm -hmm. including the main theme him and three other idols perform yeah he sings uh in the show as his character which is kind of nice too so um he's really talented he's beautiful he's absolutely beautiful and his oh semi-romantic i'm gonna have to call it semi-romantic story with a secondary female character i agree is so good but makes me so disappointed by the end yeah we'll talk about that in a bit yeah, we can talk about that in a bit. We'll just say he's an idol, and that is he's why. an idol. Yeah, um, but yeah, and we'll talk. He about gets that his own storyline basically, which yeah. happened a lot when they put like an idol as a secondary character. They get their own plot or story. We've seen, you know, yeah, uh, when they have their own following, they almost like their fans like want them. <laughs> <laughs> like they have their own s- thing they can follow yeah oh yeah yeah definitely because like we've seen that in meteor garden with yep. um mezwa mm-hmm. um like that actor had his own following and so he almost had something inserted into the plot to yep. manage hot cousin yeah true true oh the hot cousin oh the hot I cousin's like my one of my favorite characters she's probably my favorite secondary character of like all i time. love her so much <laughs> I wish that they had more of her in the second half of the season. Yeah, she disappears. Like she, she like, goes, she, but she's like a flight attendant. So kind of like they, yeah, they made it made make sense. But she was like, uh, she was almost like the female voice of Vienna in uh, her like over her shoulder. Like if yeah. if her gender identity was very much uh, split into female and male, um, the clueless friend being the male portion and the cousin. Yeah. being the female portion the cousin is always trying to drag the female out of Yanoa in any way she can trickery yeah. like you know holding flame kissing. to her feet kissing her she kisses her <laughs> she kisses her she's like like you can just kiss me cuz it doesn't mean anything <laughs> like, she is so sexy and so feminine in yeah. a way that is not annoying um, I, I love her. I love her so yeah. much. I love that. So the, the thing that happens in like the first few episodes is that she pretends to be Yanwa's, uh, girlfriend. girlfriend. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but she gets, but she, she ends up admitting that she's actually the cousin, which is a funny, 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 funny scenario that it all happens in. But, but she's just funny because she actually, you can tell that her and Yanwa have like this relationship where they're attracted to each other in a way, like in a way that's like purely, you know, it's purely like, Oh, you're, you're a good looking person. Oh, you're a good looking person too. Even though like they're cousins, like it's so funny. Cause I've, 
you know, I, I can relate to that in a way, like I can relate to that in a way that's like, I know, uh, you, you have people that are related to you that you're like, oh, you're an attractive individual. And when you're intimate with those people in a way that's like you touch and you hug and whatever it, it, it's not like a, it's not like a weird thing. It's yeah. like a, it's a comfort. It's like a comfortability thing. Well, and like, they very much like, sometimes I would consider my cousins, like my part-time siblings. Yeah. Like, it, it's very much like along those lines, like they are very comfortable in each other's space. So there, yeah. there's almost, she'll like hug, uh, you know, and like, she'll hold know, on like, to her arm. She'll, she'll hold like, on her yeah. arm and she'll like yeah. put her head on her shoulder. And, and she's it's not very- doing this when she's just pretending to be the girlfriend. She's doing this all the time yeah because that's their relationship they're yeah. very much in each other's space which yeah. like some of my cousins who are like some of my best friends I'm in their space because I've grown up with them they're exactly. like my siblings you know yeah and that's sort of saying like you know when you're she's when you're definitely her well. best friend even though yeah. the, the clueless friend is very much her secondary best friend exactly like when you yeah. know people that well like and you feel comfortable like being physical with them yeah you feel comfortable like like understanding that, Hey, they're an attractive individual. Like there's this weird relationship that you have with them that you can't have with any other human. Uh, it's a very specific type of relationship. So I I just, I just really like appreciate that kind of thing being shown and not Mm -hmm. just like the, not just like the typical, uh, like they, they hang out to and talk at each other in the same room. Like there's yeah. actually like physicality. There's which physicality. Nice. And that's like, you know, you would hug your cousin, you would hang yeah. out and maybe like you're watching a movie and you're like hanging out really close and you're cuddling around the couch yeah. or whatever. Like it's not a sexual thing. It is no. just a, um, a companionship thing. Yeah. I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. I think it's something that Corey and I were trying to talk about, uh, last month with, when we talked about coffee prints was that it's really important to communicate with your body and especially in relationships like that relationships where you are family, relationships where you are best friends, relationships where you need to convey something that you can't just convey with words, you know, uh, putting your hand on somebody's shoulder can like change your, it can change your world. It can change your relationship. It can change Mm -hmm. everything. And it's just, it, I don't know if that's just where we come from, but like where we come from, like not a lot of people touch. So Mm -hmm. touching is like, it's just something that I'm trying to be more aware of. Um, something that, and like it, it comes down to the, um, five different ways that people experience reward, right. Or, or, um, acceptance and it can be verbal and it can be, you know, um, like money it can be you know different things like that and one of them is you know being able to actually physically touch somebody else right and that's like a hug or that's like you know a touch on the shoulder or like a you know hey you got this smack on the butt (laughs) (laughs) you know like and and but as long as it's consensual yeah it's exactly exactly and again there's like that there's that one little weird area of like reading somebody's acceptance of touching that comes into play but again that's all a part of it it's all a part of it like your relationship all cool to ask yeah if they turn you down exactly 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 it's it's really important it's a two-way street right you know like any relationship with any human being is a is a two-way street but anyways so yeah i i love i love the relationship between uh, Yenwa and the cousin. I think it's super cute. I, again, I love any relationships, especially between two, two women in dramas is fantastic when they're, when they're physical together, when they laugh together, when they hang on each other, it makes me happy. It really makes me happy. So, um, the, <laughs> the next one I had listed, the villain? forgive, yeah, forgive me if I'm skipping over a bunch of them, but yeah, the villain, all I had, like, literally in my notes, all it says is the villain is hot. Enough said. Because no, I don't think that's enough said. <laughs> I don't think that's no, enough said. Of course not. No, no. Okay. And I wanted to add this in. So you think <laughs> villain is hot. Enough said. No, villain is hot slash crazy ex girlfriend. He's insane. <laughs> he that's pulls off crazy. Thought. No. No. 
<laughs> no, like he is, he is attractive, but <laughs> the crazy meter, crazy hot, like relationship thing. Uh-huh. Like, you know, there's like this weird scale where like, if they're crazy, like they start to become like super hot slash crazy, like yeah. on the X, Y vertices, he is so crazy and he pulls off crazy so well like with just his looks and his like he starts to like huff a little bit like (laughs) like and he's like looking at people and like he pulls off crazy so well oh yeah he does there's a there's a part where he's in the gym and he I guess like Yanwa comes there to confront him and I think that was the moment that I was like oh this guy is insane like this guy (laughs) needs like, some psychological help because yeah. he's legitimately insane yeah and that's like but, part of the problem like he's crazy and he feels like uh undervalued by everyone around him exactly. and like he doesn't live up to like it's it's always like the emotional baggage that these characters oh, carry so his, around with them his dad yeah he doesn't live up to his dad's expectations and da, 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 da. yeah no there's all of yeah. these things we'll talk about it uh <laughs> we gotta mention it in spoiler territory though so the tropey stuff. So, so now we basically covered all of the characters or the, all of the important characters. Uh, sorry if we missed any that you like, but let us know on Twitter. If you can There's talk the about uncles, it. the uncles who are part of the clan and part of yeah. the swarm, the, the previous generation swarm brotherhood. It's, I mean, they have relationships. We missed uh, the sick girl, uh, Nana, uh, yeah. who is in the relationship with B yeah. in the, the, you know, best, the other best friends idol. Yeah. Um, Nana is unfortunately kind of annoying to me. Yeah. She is kind of annoying. Unfortunately but, annoying. But it's okay because I she, wanted to like her. No, but it's okay because she has a disease. It's okay it's that she's okay. annoying because she has cancer. Yeah. I think that changes you. I think that makes you uh. like, I think that makes, I, I'm not going to lie. I, I, I actually, actually really liked her character a lot. Uh, I think that I liked her when she first appeared and she was into coffee. Cause I thought that was really funny. I liked that she annoyed. Yeah. I like that she annoyed, uh, B. that secondary. Yeah. B, yeah. B character. Uh, I like that she pushed him. Uh, yeah, I liked, no, I liked, that. I liked all of that. Like it's all yeah. in theory. Yeah. And then I'm like, Oh Yeah. No, it, it, it landed kind of, weird for me. Maybe it, it made sense to me at the end, but okay. Um, okay. with how her, with her mother and her father, and how things, and how she was, how she was raised to think about her upbringing, how she was raised to think about her past by her mother, <sighs> who like her mother kind of you know didn't write things correctly. Her mother didn't really tell her the truth about her past. So yeah, I guess angry. I guess that's true. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, anyways, I, into, I, I, I like your tropes. Yeah, tropes in, slash, like the thing about tropes real quick. We're super key. Um, there is so much skinship in this. Yeah. Like, it's almost overwhelming how much skinship happens with the two mains. Yeah. Compared to other shows that don't, that are straight, like, heteronormative relationships. Yeah. Like, they, yeah. they, because it's almost like because of this brotherhood idea that they become like it's like brother love to start yeah absolutely and for some reason the main male character he likes to touch that's his thing he is putting that forth he is you know he's always reaching out to her putting his hand on her shoulder giving her a hug like um putting his arm around her picking her up and drenching her in a water fountain <laughs> literally like all over the place yeah dancing with way, her way more mm-hmm. than heteronormative dramas absolutely way more than a lot of modern really well produced k dramas do I, I i was shocked watching this one at how much skinship there was and how much touching there was and it made me like uh zufong's character so much because it was like yeah. it, it and he made he made it believable 
uh, Baron Chin yeah. played it in a way that was like, of course I would touch It was like he was um, affection way. starved his whole life and yeah. he was like drinking up this opportunity to be connected and have this other person that he could constantly rely on. It was, it was a good way to gloriously it. done. Um, we're not going to talk it. about the next trope because we're going to talk about that as soon as we get into spoilers. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, um, there's a they keep passing each other. Yeah, so there's a really great uh, scene where we can talk about this. It's not really a spoiler. Uh, there's a scene towards the middle of the drama where she is dressed as a woman and he is, you know, they're in the same oh, space. Yeah. yeah. And they are literally, they are literally like passing each other the whole time. Like they're walking through all and- of these areas. And that t- probably ties into the maybe their whole life until they become intertwined because of some earlier stuff you find out in their backstory. But also, she was basically parked outside, uh, you know, his amusement park, yeah. like for the last couple of years, yeah, to do her job, and they never ran into each other. Like it's 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 like passing ships at sea until suddenly they run into each other and like they're intertwined and basically start to orbit each other. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a very special scene to me because it's like, but that I mean, it's but so that's symbolic. a common thing that happens kind of like throughout the storyline, like with the yeah. earlier backstory pieces and like it. They've yeah, always been it happens when she dresses up as a woman. Yes, and um, they they miss each other in that restaurant. Like it happens a couple of times if you yeah. uh if you you know, you watch it and you'll, you'll notice it now that we've pointed it out. Yeah. If you're watching it for the first time or rewatching it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a really special, it's a really special moment to me. And it's also like, it's also very frustrating to watch, which I think it's why it's such a fun scene. <laughs> Cause you're yeah. like, you're like, are they going to see each other here? Cause it goes on forever. It goes on for a very long time when they're constantly like passing each other they're looking at similar things they're looking at christmas lights is what they are looking but at it happens but... earlier when she dresses up for the first time when they go to the restaurant and then she changes back to mm-hmm. a man so yeah it happens like a few times it happens until a few times together yeah but that but it's like yeah it does happen a few times so yeah the trope the trope happens a lot throughout the show but i think like that one scene where they play it up to the in point the christmas setting yeah where it's like exhausting <laughs> it's uh I, I I find that particularly funny because it, again it's so meta. It's like they're just really they're really stretching it out, you know. And um but the, yeah, no, it pays off at the end though, because there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that happens after that, and there's a lot of stuff that calls back to that, and it's really cool. Um, but yeah, and then and then big romantic gestures. Uh I think the one of the coolest things about this drama was that uh before a lot of big spoilers, before a little before a lot of secrets, you know, that come out, like Zufong uh, professes his love to Yan Yanua in, in in ways like it builds up. Like he he says little things to her, and then he says a little bit more, mm-hmm. and then he does little things, and he does a little bit more, um, and it and it keeps building up. And you're like, how can he? How can he surpass what he did before? But he keeps surpassing yeah. what he did before. And it's so genuine. And it comes across in such a lovely way. Um, it's very, it's it's very uh fanciful. It's very, you know, um, yeah, it's very, it's very fanciful. It's not like a it's not like realistic, but it's cool. It's cool that they continue to like one up every single romantic gesture that he has. Uh, I really like that part. The weirdest one was when he dressed her like him. That was the weirdest one. <laughs> and then he took her to like the restaurant where he played piano or something. Yeah, that, that was, was so, so weird. It was <laughs> it's so weird. Like he kept on like <laughs> turning her into him. I don't, I don't know. I I, I mean agree with that. I, there was I some weird agree. stuff that he decided to give her, like similar sweaters and similar suits yeah. and like. But was, he was like he, dressing her like him. He does, but he plays it so honestly. Like he plays I it. I know it plays. It plays in the moment, but when you're after, it leaves a weird aftertaste. Like you're like, that was weird. Yeah, it's so weird. But, Why are you yeah. doing that? Yeah. 
So did you want to talk any more about like kind of the LGBTQ? Yeah, no, I just want to say that uh, what's really fascinating is that although it's not illegal to be, you know, in a same sex relationship or, you know, there is in Taiwan, it's still very taboo. And actually it's brought up in the show in a very um, obvious way when it uh, it looks like a lesbian couple uh, approach the two mains <laughs> when yeah. the, there's like rumors circulating around and they're like, yeah, you're like doing it for the rest of us. And what's fascinating is actually uh, Taiwan is up for a, um, they're, they're trying to pass a law that would uh, come into place uh, later on this year, 2019, where, uh, you know, same sex marriage would be legalized and there would be a lot of protections and things like that happening because of that, which I mean, I think it's incredibly progressive, which is awesome for them. Yeah. Um, I, I really hope it does pass because then, you know, maybe we'll get different kind of dramas that happen yeah. in Taiwan, which would be really kind of cool to see. I actually asked Ty when I was rewatching this. I'm like, so when where I can actually see like a like a homosexual relationship happening or queer relationship <laughs> happening? Like, I don't I don't know enough about Asian dramas to know, but like I would like to see one actually yeah. played out on screen. Yeah. Maybe um maybe it's a Thai uh Thailand. drama Thai, Thailand. Thailand drama. Yep. I don't know. I'll have to I'll have to do some research, but I think that that would be really fascinating to cover on the show too. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I haven't delved into it. I'm still kind of tiptoeing into all of this, but but yeah, like I have some I have some drama mamas that uh have talked about that online and it sounds really interesting especially because considering the taboo-ness of some of these relationships over there and it's how... funny but like culturally there's a there's a chinese god of yeah. homosexual love yeah <laughs> so <laughs> like like it's built into the culture but like it's uh it it probably varies in taboo yeah. um and so you know, it, it's something at least that we recognize uh, here Western wise that, you know, we're okay with. And it's becoming like, even in the last few years, we see a lot more relationships publicly built into fiction, especially in TV. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it would be really get, great to see over there too. Yeah, definitely. I, I think it's inevitable, but, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, especially with the, especially with the popularities of dramas like these, I think it's, I think it's inevitable, but uh yeah, so we're gonna get into spoiler territory now because I think we cannot contain oh my god all of the spoilers because they're so good. But you know, honestly, like go watch it. Uh, if you don't mind spoilers, feel free to listen. Give it a try because like Give that's I I put it I put it like six or seven down on my list, and I ended up like binging it because. I give it a try. I'm like, I'll just give it a try. And I'm like, oh my God, I love these two so much. The first <laughs> episode sells it so well, just with Pierre Noir's being just a kick-ass martial artist and like being this character, just l- like Megan Lay like sells it. And yeah. then Baron Chen just being Baron Chen oh, he's and so handsome good. and yeah. just so good. Um, yeah. And just like, like the genuineness that they play the weird oddities about the world that they live in yeah. sells it for me. Yeah. And just, I mean, it, especially if you're tired of that trope, like just give it a try. Cause I didn't think that I would enjoy this one at all. And um, just by the face of it, I was like, ah, bah. Yeah. but fool me, fool me, Netflix. You're, you are uh, prove me wrong. Netflix, you <laughs> popped it up. You kept on popping it up. And I was like, fine. Fine. Yeah. And again, suspending Fine. suspending your disbelief a little bit on the first couple of episodes or so, you know, to focus on the characters, focus on what they're trying to tell you. And it's it's so good. It's so good. But it's so good, yeah. yeah. So, spoiler uh, land. Spoilers. <laughs> spoiler land. Oh, You've stuff. been warned. Fun stuff. And um, I have to say, like the spoilers in the show are delectable they are so good they are so oh, yeah like i i don't know if i've watched another drama that has I don't, like spoilers like this before do we want to high level what happens plot wise yeah yeah i i actually kind of arranged them i tried rearrange arranging them oh some of them um, okay so let's talk about so hi the, well let's talk about the past okay. stuff first like okay so way back before yeah. 
the current show, we get these flashback periods yeah. where we find out uh, <sighs> Zhu Fong was adopted, given the name Zhu Fong from like uh, basically saving the life of his adopted father. Right. And his adopted father's like, no, now you're mine. And I'm going to give you the name <laughs> Zhu Fong. And then, and then, um, you know, we also have the initial flashback about Piano being born a girl, unfortunately, right. and having to pretend to be a boy. So that kind of is all set up in the first episode. Right. Additionally, we find out that um, Zhu Fong almost died drowning in a river and yep. was rescued by a little girl who we find out throughout the course of the show was actually Piano dressed it- up as a girl. Yeah, that one time. I think at some point they make us think that it was her cousin, and then you're like, yeah. "No, that doesn't make any sense. Why would it be her cousin?" Yeah, and it's like, oh and no. Additionally, to add like that third, like very Shakespearean level, the uh, off, uh, ad- <laughs> it's not, like not even an adversarial boy, but like uh, her. Oh, that's uh, right. friend that they grew up with. Right. Which we didn't even cover in the characters. No, the friend didn't. she grew up with, who lived next door, who uh, you know, went along with the with the fact that she was a boy, finds out that she's a girl in that circumstance yeah. by peering through the bushes to see the river. And so it's like all of those like the cousin was there, Zhu Fong was there, and this this uh neighbor best friend. Yeah. Who is also falling? Who also falls in love with her when he finds out that she's a woman? Uh, when he and finds has loved out her his woman. whole life. Yeah, yeah. And is actually in the intro. It, yeah, you know, it's like he's like that important of a character because he will always protect her and things like that. And we didn't even cover her in the character section or cover him. I Oops. know. Yeah, that's really weird. I, I don't like him as a character, so maybe that's why. Uh, but. <laughs> he's kind of like, and he goes through this weird thing where he like admits that he was a bad guy and yeah. kind of was forced into being a bad guy and his story is a little weird and then he ends up like adopting a puppy with Yanua. With Yanua oh, and it's, it's like, so weird. It's, it's there's like I I didn't ever believe that relationship. I think that that's yeah. part of the problem. Um yeah. And that's okay. Um yeah, it's like the only thing that really doesn't stick for me in the drama yeah. honestly. But oh no, we haven't gotten to the end part. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, see, I'm I'm fine with the end part. Oh, fine, okay. Oh, uh, so, so, so there was like this whole barrette thing, which carries on through like the whole show about how he flower barrette. barrette. Yeah, so that yeah. was actually hers when she when they were kids, um, when she saved him and he kept it his whole life. So, but um, I like that. I think it's a really cool. Like, I, I like how in Asian dramas, how there's always like this tangible object that they have that yeah. holds them to something they have to do, like something they have to accomplish. Yeah. And it's a lot of male characters that get that. It's something I'm yeah. figuring out more as I watch these dramas. It's like, it is, it is a thing. It's a thing. Yeah, that is a reminder of their uh, past or their obligations or obligations. Something like that. Yeah, they have yeah. to do. They have to like fulfill something, and then later in the drama, it's common for them to find out that that object was touched by or was involved owned by. with, owned yeah. by the female character. It happens yeah. all the time. It's funny, and uh, it happened in Shopping King Louis, the one I just watched. It, like, it's so a lot of these dramas they have all these same tropes that they share. But uh, another fun one uh, is they like literally we were talking about skinship and they kiss yep. in the second episode it's an accident it's like an accident bumped into him because they were dancing and it was all kind of set up together but what yeah. i really wanted to tie back is that before that situation happens yeah i just want to mention that they are tied because of this sworn brotherhood because they saved each other yes and it's um, it's so key because um, we see this a lot in Star Wars, um, especially right. with the Raylo fandom. The idea that you are alone without realizing how alone you are. Yeah. And that trope of f- finally finding your other counterpart. Even though they happen to come in this like weird clothing and like it's not who you thought they would be is so powerful and because like by the time they become sworn brothers even though they don't know what that means or it's like 
they're kind of married, even though yeah. they're not, you know, like they're tied together. And we see that in the Raylo trope in Star Wars, right? Uh, yeah. Or the Raylo relationship in Star Wars. They're tied together, intertwined mm -hmm. forevermore. Mm -hmm. True. Because they've sworn in front of the God. Yeah, true. As part of it, right? And so um, everything they do is built on that initial promise. And the relationship is very much cemented by the second episode when to save Nianua from embarrassment because she was holding the ticket, even though she was a guy, mm -hmm. guy, quote unquote, he offers to dance with her uh, in this very <laughs> socially awkward scene that they play yeah. up so well. And then adding awkwardness to awkwardness, she gets bumped by her awkward, her, her funny cousin. Yep and kisses him and then it causes more social awkwardness and then they play it off and they're like yeah it just happened yeah <laughs> yeah they do it so well it's just yeah. it's so cute and it, it was a really nice like chivalrous part on the main male's behalf right because he yeah. was like i'm going to take the i'm, I'm going to take the humili humiliation and just like go with it like i'm gonna own this i'm gonna own this humiliation and own it but then he kind of struggles with the idea that he was just kissed and i think that he starts to realize like hey i like that yeah yeah you know like as and we hear we hear that conversation from yanoa like in in her denial of how much she liked kissing him yeah to the cousin but it's obvious that uh, Zufong struggles. <laughs> he, uh, Baron Chen plays up Zufong's struggles yeah. with what he is experiencing so well and like even breaks and like comments like the script, but he like the acting plays into it so well when he's like, if you were a woman, I'd be so into you. Yeah. You know, but like it's believable because he's been playing up the struggles emotionally on his face and in, in his body language and all of those things mm -hmm. up to that point when like the third episode he says that yeah if you were a woman i would we would be together already yeah <laughs> like, yeah but he does it in like this kind of like playboyish way where she gets a, a different kind of idea from what he's saying yeah like like yeah. oh you wanted to do that like yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. but and he, like but he means it differently <laughs> yeah and they oh you missed you missed a trope in the third episode with yeah. uh forced to sleep in the same bed yeah <laughs> it happens in the third episode this this whole drama it's it escalates episodes. so quickly and uh, but yeah. yet it feels like little steps every yes. single time until they fully commit to basically like uh, you put in here the rooftop rescue um mm -hmm. essentially piano is is trying to save Zufong from uh, this social embarrassment to do with uh, this like tabloid that's basically making up garbage about him. And so she goes and confronts the editor and gets locked out on the roof. Yeah. In the rain. In the rain and then gets sick. And it's like, because anybody, anybody in an Asian drama that touches water gets sick. <laughs> like just, just a sprinkling on their face and they're like, ah, I'm dying like literally like when I'm watching a nation drama and like somebody falls in a pool or their head goes underwater somehow or they get like splashed with water or they get stuck in the rain they get or, stuck in the rain a minute, or have to walk like, home in the rain if if Corey if Corey like sees me watching this drama he literally passes by he goes oh they're gonna be sick oh they're gonna be sick oh they're gonna be sick and I'm like yes it's exactly what they get a happen. fever and it's like usually like a night like they get sick yeah. but yeah, Baron, or sorry, Zifong like jumps over like a gap in two roofs to like she go and rescue and she's her. She's like, don't she's do like, it, no, don't do it, don't do it. I'm not worth it. And it's like <laughs> it's like that moment that totally solidifies that they are in each other's yeah like souls forever. Um, they would give each other's lives for each other. That's, exactly, like they would die for each other, and yeah. that has that comes up several times about how how much they would uh, do for one another. And it, yeah. you know, they play it off like this is brother, this is our brother vow, and we're we're each other's sworn brothers. But it it's more than that, and they say that um, they start to say that more and more. He is more than my sworn brother. I need you. Yeah. Oh, I need you. I need you. Kills me. So, 
So yeah, we'll go ahead and get this little one out of the way. Um, the idol character. This is a sad, this is a sad spoiler. Um, B, it makes me so mad. <laughs> like, yeah, they're cute, but like they never oh, kiss. Oh man, it makes me feel so grumpy. B and non Nana or Nana, whatever her name is, they never kiss. And I, I thought they would. They like each other. Nana. Mm-hmm. And they like each other. At least they say so. But it's like this forever companionship. It's like the intention. <laughs> ah, maybe that's why it exists. Let me let me muse on this for a second. It's like what you would expect yeah. of the uh, Zafong Pian Noir relationship, but opposite in that they know that they're a boy and a girl, yeah, and they're going to be like, she, like together forever oh, as but family. She likes him. Yeah. Tells yeah. him that she loves them, but they, yeah, but they never fully get my, there. Like, my, and my, I, I don't know that yeah, he doesn't that like he her because he says, but like my he theory does. is that they were worried that his fans are too intense. Yeah. That like, and they do this with Korean drama actors as well. Like they will not give the romantic storylines because the fans will freak out. They don't let them. Yeah, oh, like even like so they kind of BTS went that had like a, direction had like just to, where they to had avoid girls in their music videos that issues. were part of like a story. Um, and even then, like fans like weren't really happy about these girls acting as like romantic interests with the boys, even though they never did anything, they never kissed, they never really interacted like that. They just like happened to be. <sighs> it's very difficult. They're, they're not allowed to date like they're not allowed to being like, an idol has got to be very difficult they are owned by their fans and the fans feel like they like they have a right to have the idols to themselves um it, it's something that's going away now thankfully but i can imagine that that's why um mm. you know I would say that that's less common in North uh-huh. America. It's it happened, I think, a little bit with like, especially Britney Spears when she started yeah. dating and um, getting married and then divorced and then married and then divorced. Um, but like, it really shocked a lot of people that she was. Yeah, and again, like this happens to be like a thing like about willing to do that. I I think that'll change over time. Companies. You know, in America, we have like this idea about individuality you know, uniqueness, individualism, owning your own career. But I don't, I I mean, I think that boy bands, like until they broke up, they weren't really allowed to have public relationships. Like, no, it's uh, true. Um, There there is an element of that, but that doesn't really exist Until they were independent artists. Like that was a, that was a very, like, that was like a spark in the music industry. Yeah. It does. They, we don't have that anymore. It didn't last as long as like the K-pop very nineties thing and the idol. Not just not just K-pop. Yeah. It's not just K-pop, but the idol industry. Like Dylan Wang and the Flower Four of Meteor Garden have yeah. become that. They are idols now. Um, yes, they they travel and they do their own mini mini sods like the one yeah. uh, where they're all dolls in the doll shop yeah they do like variety so it was like around a variety show and yeah, yeah they, they do all this other stuff they do commercials like really long commercials that are like have like amazing production value um like how shen yu is kind of like a um adopted member of f4 like yeah. she's part of them but like only occasionally there <laughs> yeah she is yeah she's, and she kind of keeps doing her own like weird indie shows thank god but she's 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 in a new drama that's coming out soon I she think. is but yeah it's like a real it, but it's like it, it's not like a romance thing it's like she is a it's about a fee it's a female female relationship um cool. like friendship kind of thing yeah uh but they're like destined to be friends forever and it's about their lives but anyways so yeah she cool. keeps doing that kind of stuff, which is awesome. <laughs> but anyway, so idols, like I like as I say, like idols don't kiss in dramas. So uh if any if anyone's listening to this and this like 
you know, K-pop fans, Jin, who is in BTS, is like rumored to be in a drama soon. And everybody's wanted this for years because he's incredibly attractive and he's hilarious. There's no way he's going to get a romantic storyline. Like, like did, Metsu- did Metsua in uh, uh, Meteor Garden kiss Senai? Metsu- I wouldn't say Metsua is an idol. I would but say he was like a winner of a national. Like yeah. he was an idol before because they made F4 after it. He actually had his own following. That's why he got that subplot. He didn't have as much of a following as people like to say. I think that the show that he was on manufactured that kind of thing. They wanted oh, him to be an idol. But he also really didn't like like get romantic with he pursued her, but like he didn't get physical with her. Yeah, and I think that they were trying because he has that very innocent look about him. They wanted him to be that kind of character and they wanted him to be like emotionally available for young girls, but no one connected with him and no one connected with that storyline. So, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny cuz like in the manga, no, we're talking about Meteor Garden, but in the manga, <laughs> that character literally makes out with women in the manga. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like older he's the he's the one that goes after older women, which ties into the Sinai Sana um yep. storyline that she's older than him, but like like in the manga they show like stuff. Thing, yeah. Yeah, it didn't it didn't work, <laughs> didn't work in the show. It didn't work in the yeah, show. Yeah, no fair. Like he was too he was too baby faced. Like yeah. he looked it like a weird. little cute kid. Um uh, yeah, redemption. Okay, so this ties into the bad guy thing and he doesn't get fully redeemed but he's certainly on the path of it he realizes how wrong he is by the end but he puts everyone everyone through hell he yeah. almost ends up shooting the main characters like oh he like he doesn't a crazy guy and also i think at one point doesn't he isn't he a part of the whole plot to like he like he, he killed does a, he does the thing with he the killed co- the idols parents oh, he killed the right. idol's parents right, he and he uh threw did he try the... to kill yanwa though he tried to like oh no, yeah no no he tried something. to kill yanwa he tried to kill uh zofong like, yeah he literally was irredeemable irredeemable right but what it, does he do at the end when his dad is like i'm gonna go and turn myself in because i caused you yeah he says oh my God, I'm actually wrong. And he turns himself in and begs for forgiveness from Zivong and yeah. um, and the idol. And he's on his knees. There's this powerful scene where he's basically on like the police station steps and he's like, please, can I have a moment to apologize? Yeah, yeah. He's like on his knees and he's like begging for forgiveness. And they forgive him in a way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But it's it's very powerful. Like this guy is really like he committed multiple murders. Yeah, he uh, blew up a fireworks factory. Like he kidnapped <laughs> people. Like he uh, was a crime underlord. Like uh, you know, a uh, crime lord where he was doing his own thing, and Zafon yeah. was all pissed off at him. And he knew he would like get him in trouble. Like he was a bad dude, and he totally has a, his epiphany moment by the end of the arc, and it's. Uh, it's very interesting, and he he loses his crazy by the end, <laughs> like he his does. crazy look. Yeah, because he because he was doing everything for his father. Like it, it is weird that he goes on this like bizarre like redemption arc. redemption arc. Yeah, like where he comes yeah. to terms with like who his dad really is, and his dad's like his dad was afraid of him for a hot minute, yeah. right? He, and that's when he really figured it out. He was like, I did I did all this for you, but I did all this for you, and his dad was like you're not my son. Like I didn't ask you to do this or whatever. And that's when he's like, okay, like I, I, I messed up. Like I shouldn't have done any of this. This is not who I want to be. Um, and it's a really cool, it's a really cool, like twist at the end. I like how, yeah. And we find out that he basically had caused all of the pain in all of the male characters lives. Yeah, he did. Right. Cause the dad was missing with who he, you know, comes back and that's, yep. you know, the, the dad who comes back halfway through with amnesia, with amnesia and so starts to repair all of the broken relationships. And we find out that, you know, the idol B's character's parents were killed by him. Like he is yeah. the impetus for everything because of this f- conflict that was initiated before by, um, do the dad. 
Mm-hmm. the the old mafia boss basically giving up the mafia and he didn't feel like that was something that should be done yeah. you know like it's all of the sins of the father kind of exactly like all these sins of the father and and that's a common um thread common too thing, with yeah. when we find out that nana the sick girl mm-hmm. dad is this is the uh basically the uncle or the sworn brother of the previous generation yeah you know it's kind of like they could have done they could do like a bromance, like third generation, second generation show where like yeah. all the sins of these other like children like come out or whatever. They could do something like that, yeah. which would be really cool. It was, again, like, it was so like, the- it was so ripe with like family ties and like, he's like sins of the father yeah. tropes and even like how the mother was so a part of like that, even though the mother has never seen, well, she has seen in like a, there was like a home video that we had that we, you know, you to see yeah, you see Nana's the home video. Mom, yeah. yeah. But, um, but like, you know, everything that Nana's mom told her was kind of like this, this twisted version of the truth. And mm-hmm. like, she told her that her dad like left, but he didn't really leave. Like he never knew about her. So all of this is like this redemption and and sins of like the parents and that's really interesting to see um yeah so the big <laughs> big one and and there are other ones that happen like you know there are a lot of twists in the show there are a lot of really fun things that happen uh there's a lot of angsty twists there's a lot of ones that literally just change the direction of the show at that time uh like whenever whenever they're passing each other, when they go see the Christmas lights, they see, they they finally meet up and they finally talk and they finally interact when she is dressed as a woman and she has to say, Oh, I'm not Yanwa. I'm his sister. So then she has to start playing the role of both the sister who lives abroad, supposedly, and Yanwa, who's like the man that he knows. So there's, but, but, but what makes this all palatable, I think, and I know, I know it's, it's only palatable. not the right it's, word. It's, it's palatable it's, because it's, it's, it's what makes it culturally acceptable. No, 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 no. What? Plot wise. Oh, plot wise. Yeah. Plot yeah, yeah. wise. It makes sense because he's known from like what was it like episode like 17 or something that she's a woman? Like it was like, yeah. yeah so um, it, there's the episodes on Netflix happens, were but... combined together. I yeah. think that that's important to say that originally when they, when they uh, showed there was 18, 19, 18 episodes yeah. um, in the main plot and episode nine. So halfway through episode 18 probably when you consider like they basically split in half yeah um somewhere around there when um dr chu (laughs) the brother (laughs) brother chu brother chu who's the who's the you know friend that's known her the neighbor from from her childhood reveals to her that he knows that she is a woman and uh zufong overhears this and no one knows no one in that room that's revealing this information knows that he is standing outside. The audience doesn't know that he is standing outside. It is a cutaway scene that happens later on yeah. in the last episode. And I I have a problem with that. <laughs> I had a problem with it, but then I went back and I literally watched like every interaction that they had from that scene on. And I was like, okay, first of all, this absolutely was planned. So at first I was like, no, there's no way they planned that. It absolutely was planned. No, it, it was. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I it just, was it, after, it was, it was after he went through his gay panic stuff. Yeah. It was after that. It was after he accepted her. It was yeah. after he had kissed her willingly. So yeah. let me, let me go back. I'm just going to take a sec here. <laughs> Yeah, I think it like technically it happens in the same episode, I think. As what? As the No, it happens later, like when they when they actually are officially together. When yeah. he has his He he ex- he finally accepts it. Like he accepts that they're together and that's when he finds out. But he they but they don't make it they don't make it official though. 
it's just a yeah no like he accepts her and and like kind of turns down the idea of her twin sister which is also played up um yes. yeah no that happens yeah um so basically the gay panic lasted like moments yeah yeah it, but it but it lasted enough for him to like go to the gym and punch a punching bag in a very like yeah he was all upset way. he's like ah oh, <laughs> i can't believe i'm gay <laughs> uh, but he comes out so of stupid. it like it, it it is it is it is kind of it's kind of funny but um but i you know like i i admire i admire what they did with it because like honestly like Again, if you were to pull this into the real world, none of it would make any sense. But it, it's a little bit more like, it's a little bit more like palatable to like go through everything they go through after that, like everything they experience together. You know, he he was experiencing it and understanding that she was keeping this secret and holding this secret back and like um, letting her letting her go through that, letting her tell him when she wanted to and he and he just wanted to be with yeah him. he just wanted to like be and the, like the swing set scene happens far after that so yeah. like when she's like please don't be mad at me when when i tell you something after i turn yeah 26 you know and he's like no i promise and uh he already knows yeah and he already knows he already knows and, like she writes him she writes him the letter and he like reads it and he's like yep <laughs> yep I think that's sweet though, because there was never it, it let us skip that moment of of angst of you lied to me, you kept it from me, right? That would have happened. Yeah, I didn't. That we didn't need that. Days. Yeah, no. Yeah, that we happened. didn't need. That was nice. It was nice to not have that. Like, ah, oh, you lied to me. That's how they yeah. got. That's how they didn't have to do that scene. That was their way out. Yeah. That that like honestly, coffee yeah. prints. A lot of people hate coffee prints because that scene. Or that, sorry, it's not just a scene. It's literally like three or four episodes that that. Oh, God. It's hard. It's hard to get through. It's really hard. Um, okay, I can see why people would have problems with that. Because I, I don't personally, like, that. that's very hard for me to watch. Because, like, making up for past mistakes and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the angst that's caused from keeping something from someone is very frustrating to watch uh i like it if i understand it i like it i'm good with it but you know you're I okay like, i i just think that they tend to like do things too long sometimes with those tropes like the angst I agree. tropes I, like yeah. in in um hananori yoridango or in um boys over flowers like that version of it in in the korean version of it or in like the angst of him having amnesia. Yeah. Like when they didn't do that in Meteor Garden was amazing. <laughs> Cause it was like, ah, cause they did it for like two seconds and yeah. they got to feel that angst, but it wasn't drawn out through like multiple episodes. True. Um, There's a, so the, yeah. and I am not a robot, which is one that I would suggest for you to watch if you ever were able to. Um, the, the funny thing is like, she's, pretending to be a robot right <laughs> um but it's actually really 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 well done and really believable so when he finds out that she's not a robot that does last for a very long time but the reason it lasts for a very long time is because the other fun thing about this drama is that he is allergic to humans oh <laughs> so like legitimately like he cannot touch humans because he breaks out in like this rash and he could die Oh, it's like a psychological thing, but it's like, still, it's very real. So, um, so he, so that's why he had, he needs this like robot. The reason why he's so upset and the reason why this is such a betrayal is that he could have died. Oh, she was but it was all psychological. Human. It was all psychological. Oh. So, um, but it's really, yeah. really well done. It's all right. Howard so Hughes. Well done. Oh, it's so good though. <laughs> it's so good. But he's such a, he's such a he's such a soft sensitive but yet like really like he's very sexy i don't know like he's a very interesting character i really like him um but yeah no that one does it very well like i think there's just some they do it very well and i think it's funny that like bromance just decided to skip the angst like it's just like let's just i was i was fine with it I was fine with it i was fine with well, it I just, uh, I thought, like, you know they didn't, really they didn't actually skip it they they didn't actually skip it 
they had a moment of her anxiety because he didn't call her first thing on the yes. moment on the morning of her reveal, right? Yes. We experience it with her as the character without it actually happening. But if you just look at how many episodes are left, you go, well, that's not going to last very long. <laughs> no, but we we still have a moment of anxiety and that True. angst is still there without it actually having uh having any anything take away from Zufong. Yeah. Cuz he was he was just wanting to her, have her find him. I loved that. Yeah, that was, it was so such a good cool. end. Okay, but yeah, I love so I good. love this drama so much. Yeah, the, this one was really good. Uh, I'm, I know you fell for it. I know we I fell for it. Fell for so it. Oh well, it was so good. I definitely fell okay. for it. Um, I think the next one that we're gonna talk about is Strong Girl Bong Soon. I think. Mm-hmm. Gosh, I I hope I don't change it again next month, but I'm pretty sure we're going to talk about Strong Girl Bong soon. So uh, quote me on it. I'll stick to it. You can tweet out what we're covering. Yeah, I should. I should. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Strong Girl Bong soon next. And we'll talk about kind of like the fun, like gender flips in that drama, as well as some other things that we. Oh, the, the tropes in that one are so fun. Tropes in it. So, so, so good. Mo- the emotional parts are so good. So, um, so yeah. So I hope you guys and really. Min, min. Min, min. Yes. Yes. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this discussion. Uh, we are going to not stick with tea dramas all the time. I promise. It just happens to be the ones that are really easily accessible on Netflix that we were exposed to first. Uh, but yeah, so if you want to talk more about dramas like on a regular basis, please follow us on uh, Fall For It underscore drama on Twitter. And you can follow me on my personal at black underscore TYM. And you can follow Marie Claire at Marie C. Gould at Marie C. on Twitter. Gould. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, follow us on there to discuss more about like anything any drama or any trope or whatever um yeah and this has been fall for it thanks for listening and cheers